How did you learn how to write a feature length script? Yeah, I never went to any master programs. I never went to any film programs that specifically taught me my craft. Um, as I'd mentioned, CU was more about film theory and, and various things like that. It didn't really teach me in great depth what you need to do as a director or a writer. I had to learn all that on my own. Whether I did it right or wrong, who's to say? But for me, um, as I'd alluded to before, I just wrote and wrote and wrote and wrote. And through all that writing, through all those years, you start to find your own voice. And um, when I wasn't writing, I was reading. Again, great scripts, different kinds of scripts. The more type of scripts, the better. Um, <clears throat> different styles, you know, you never want to get attached to one person's style because you might start to emulate it. I mean, read different styles and go, gosh, this is amazing. I never thought you could do it this way. And what I eventually earned, learned through the years is, is um, when I'm writing my scripts, I don't just want to write a scene or write a story. Um, I bring literally the words, the structure of the sentences themselves to life. I break things apart, certain descriptions, certain ways I do it depending on the project. It should be an experience to read it. And it should be something that literally pulls the reader from one page to the next to where they can't stop. If your script doesn't hook the reader on the first page, you're done. That's just the reality is, is a lot of agents and, and managers will joke, well, I'll give you the old five page rule. It was the rule of thumb. Some say 10, but that means I'll read the first five pages. And if it doesn't have me, I don't read the rest because these guys are reading hundreds of scripts a week. They don't got time and they've got a good radar. They know what gets it. In my personal opinion, I think they give it half a page or a page. If your script just isn't really good, both from a grammat grammatical, structural, story standpoint, whatever it is, immediately um, you're not gonna gain any traction with them. So that's the goal as a writer, is you keep writing. And, and when I was teaching myself to write, I, I aspired to get to that point. I want to pull them in from the first sentence and never let them go. And how to achieve that in a variety of different genres and you know whatever your story is about was a challenge. And you just keep working on it until you get it. Did you read any books or uh, screenwriting books or no? It was just all scripts and watching yeah. movies? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And I, that's a good point you just made. Watch, watch a lot of movies. Watch some good movies. You can learn a lot from that. What some people will do is... You know, writing a scene with a lot of dialogue can be tricky because once you film it, you go, boy, this is so... It's just a bunch of talking heads. This is so dialogue heavy. Watch a great scene between two characters talking in a movie and then write it down. Most of the time, not all the time. With Aaron Sorkin, it might be a different choice or, or a different uh, circumstance, but with most writers, once you write down the dialogue from one of your favorite movies, you'll see it's a lot shorter than you think. These guys know what they're doing. They know how to write something that, that doesn't turn into a five-page monologue. Watch a lot of movies. Watch them and learn from them. And then again, keep reading, um, reading lots of different screenplays. Obviously, I'm sure there's some invaluable books out there you could read. And obviously, there's master programs. You can go out there and get a master's in screenwriting. And for all I know, you can write the pants off of me after going there for a year. Um, but uh, there's certainly those types of things are, are available to anyone at, at, at any time. I never had the time or money for it. So I did it, you could say, the hard way. Um, but, you know, for me, it was just, I guess I'd learned through my directing and producing that experience breeds experience and, and that's what pushed me forward. So it was the same with my writing. I wasn't reading books, I was just writing and, and what reading I was doing was other people's work. What's working for them? What are they doing that I'm not doing in my scripts? And I would never try to emulate their voice because um, every great script writer, you can read it and you can almost go, I know who wrote this. Would never try to emulate that, but I would just from a broad stroke standpoint, look and go, what are they doing that's so great? You know, you, obviously the best script screenplays I've ever read, as I'm reading it, I visualize the movie. I don't even think about the writing. It just pulls you into such a degree that before you know it, you've gone through it and you've been perfectly visualizing the film and you don't feel yourself turning the pages. You don't feel yourself reading the paragraphs. How do I get to that point? So I would read these guys and read them and read them and just try to make my own writing better. And I'm still doing that to this day, always trying to push myself to be better. Did you see, um, is it Nosferatu? 
with Bella Lugosi. It was like oh, the original. Yeah, of course. <laughs> yes. And there's there's no dialogue, right? It's, oh yeah. Oh, there is. Okay. No, no. I'm saying um, which I love, by the way. No dialogue. In fact, that was another challenge I gave myself back when I was doing shorts. I did a short with no dialogue. Can I tell a great story without a single word? Um, I love things like. In, in fact, one of my favorite features when I was a kid was, um, I think it was Black Stallion, Black Stallion. Oh, it was such a good movie. But pretty much the first half of the film is dialogue free. It's a boy and a, and a horse on an island. Right. And it's fabulous. It's so good. And there's not a word. You know, or if there are, it's just a couple here and there. Um, that's still something I'm mastering when it comes to writing because you know, as the general rule of thumb is it's a minute per page when you're writing. You write a page, uh, uh, you, one page of your script equals about a minute of screen time. By and large, I guess that's true, but I mean, if you don't have dialogue, it really can alter things. And I ran into challenges with that with Escape Room because there was certain segments that were dialogue free, a lot of action happening in, inside of this escape room. And when we got to actually shooting it, I went, this is going to be a lot shorter than I'd <laughs> originally planned. You know, I don't want to have like the nicest like 50 minute feature ever. So I had to kind of work my way around that and kind of find some other ways to tell the story. But, you know, I'm a big fan of that. I'm, did you, Nosferatu is something you? I think I watched the first part of it and it was just very slow and I just found it very interesting because it was yeah. creepy and it yeah. was scary. Yeah. But, but just, yeah, the, the, the slow, the pacing of it and. The, yeah, it's not everyone's cup of tea. So sure. I'm, you know, listen. Sometimes the slow burn is a little bit too slow. Um, there's another old film by, uh, I think it was Carl Theodore Dreyer, around the same time as Nosferatu, I believe, 1932, 19, 1931-ish, called Vampire. That one you should check out. Same thing, all atmosphere, amazing experimental photography of these kind of foreboding shadow figures. Right, uh -huh. Didn't have special effects, so it was all practical, but it was very clever. And uh, it was just a very different take than Nosferatu, but very interesting. Not everyone's cup of tea. I showed it to a group of friends once and they all split. It was me watching the film on my own. <laughs> but, but it's still a worthy experience if you have the time.